Hello, I'm back with another video following another pattern in TypeScript. Today I wanted to focus on the template pattern. This pattern is pretty interesting because it follows along when designing an application, we're focusing a lot on the behavior. And when you look at this pattern up, it, it, it goes together with a lot of other patterns like the strategy pattern, which focuses a lot on this idea of an algorithm. You're basically changing the structure of maybe some code, and you're noticing that maybe there are common related behaviors in a lot of different classes or subclasses in an application, but you're slightly adjusting those behaviors in some algorithm. The difference between this pattern and maybe some other pattern, like the strategy pattern, is that we have some sort of skeleton that restrains or constraints the algorithm that you are implementing in different places. So you don't have the absolute freedom that you might have in the algorithm, in the strategy pattern. Maybe you understand that there is a common behavior that's being performed, but at the same time, there is a set, almost grid or structure that you're already envisioning. And we're gonna talk a little bit about why you want that constraint in your design of your application and why you would choose to use this over some other pattern that may have a little bit more freedom in how you can implement your code. And so I'll talk about this while I demonstrate and show the code as well. Okay. So now we're going to just look at the demonstration of this code. And so we're just imagining that we have this very simple application that's just counting. It doesn't do anything else. It's not anything special. It's just counting to 10, zero to 10. While it's running this application, we're keeping a log of everything that's going on in this application. So we're pretending that maybe this is running on like maybe a client server. And every time something is going on this application, it will be written to the log. And when we think about the log, like maybe a log for J, we're imagining that there are three different types of ways that we can add information to the log. We can have a trace. We can have info, and if some issue comes up, we can also have an error. And, and in our application, at least in our log, we're imagining that it's doing at le uh, two things at least. It's going to notify what's going on, how it's being logged, and it's going to note some information within the log. So regardless of whatever the log is, whether it's trace, info, or error, it should continuously run through that specific same uh, order of keeping some information, notifying what it is, and also notifying exactly what it's supposed to save into the log. Now, a big part of this template method is also understanding that we're using the same template, same order, same behaviors, but if we look at the error, there is also something else that comes up into the console that's different from the other two implementations of the logger that we're using to keep track of the application. And if we just do a quick demonstration, as it runs through it, putting information into the log, we will notice that as soon as it gets to the number five, that there should be some error, and it should be also written in our console log. So we're imagining that maybe in another implementation or template, there might be some additional behavior or something else that we might want to have to take note of um, for some circumstance or for some situation for our application or our domain. And so we're going to just look a little bit deeper into the code so we can understand exactly how the template method is applied to this log. So now we're going to look a little bit closely at this template pattern. And if we take note of, the first thing we want to note is that it's an abstract class, meaning that the subclasses can inherit some methods, but at the same time, there are other methods or parts of the, of the class that we want the subclasses to instantiate. So it's not strictly in, all the things are inherited. And so the biggest reason why we want to do that is we want all the subclasses to have this save log, but at the same time, we do want the subclasses to uh, create their own notify method. And also, we may or may not want them to have this method, high tier notify. 
That's how we can separate the tiers, like in log4j, which has different tiers of logging, like trace, info, error. We're creating this through our own template. And another really important thing to notice with the log template pattern is, if we think about behavior, the subclasses do have to create and instantiate their own methods to uh, create the different uh, functions of notify or high tier notify. However, if we look at this function here of log, they are set in this specific order that every time the log function is called, it's always going to perform these behaviors in this specific way or in this specific manner. And that's important when you have a lot of different uh, subclasses or classes that all share the same behavior that's set in a specific way or order, like maybe a logger or another common example is maybe, let's say you have a document viewer or some kind of view function, maybe in some interface or framework that's always going to be performing the same order of actions, then you may want to restrict it in this way, not just creating common behaviors between the subclasses, but we're restricting also this order in the way that it functions as well. Now, why would we do this? A big part of using this pattern is also understanding this idea of inversion of control. Uh, a lot of people call it the Hollywood principle as well. Uh, don't call us, we'll call you. But if we do this sort of restricting and creating the skeleton of order or behavior or this algorithm that's set in this order, we're also eliminating dependencies on the subclasses because we're saying that, hey, once this higher uh, template is created, then we already can imagine that no matter what, irregardless, every time we call this code, it will always occur in this way. So we won't have to navigate or understand maybe the different ways that someone might structure an application when we have a lot of different behaviors or ways that we might create code or create patterns or create connections in our code, we'll always know that, hey, once I call this log, at the highest level, it will always perform it in this way. So we'll never have to worry about the subclasses or the way the subclasses are instantiated because we already know that on the highest level, we don't need to depend or understand the dependencies on the bottom part. That's already set in stone. Now, the next very important thing to understand is looking at the different ways that we have instantiated these functions. So this is clear to a lot of uh, text and a lot of material that uh, once we have a template, there can be something that's already set, inherited from the parent, like something here we have save log that all the subclasses will have, info, trace, error, will also have the save log. But every single subclass will implement its own notify, which for this example, it's just notifying that this is info, this is trace, and this is error. And in the gang of four, they called this the primitive operation. So this is what we expect is going to vary between the different uh, subclasses or different things that are instantiating the template. And so all the differences will occur here, but at the same time, we're expecting this same behavior of all the subclasses. So this is a reason why we might have the log what, my, why we might create the template for our application. Now, this is something that is important to understand too. And I, I call, this is supposed to mimic the hook in this template. The hook is something that uh, does not have to be implemented, but at the same time, if it is, we can create um, more complex operations, or we can account for different ways that the template might vary between the subclasses. And so for this specific, this specific uh, demonstration, we just made it a uh, console log that some error has happened. But we can also use these hooks, something that doesn't have to be instantiated. We can use it as a Boolean something that we want to return true or false to add more and more ways that we might implement varied functions.
functions within our template itself or the subclasses. Um, a good example in a lot of different materials, people equate it to food, like pizza. If you look at something online, a lot of people say, if you want pizza, if you like meat, then add vegetable, add pepperonis or something like that. But it's better to understand that we're already uh, we're already understanding that there might be some sort of future potential to where we might have to account for some behavior. So we're already predetermining that in case that there are these other subclasses that are different, like for example, in this case, we might notify that, hey, we have these specific logs, but there are these higher tier logs that we have to create different behaviors for then we might want to add this hook. In a document view, let's say, for example, your viewer has maybe some interactive elements that you also want to create some behaviors for, but you notice that not all of your subclasses will have that, then we might create a hook for it that we can instantiate for the subclasses, but we do not have to. We, we do know that all of them do require this notify, and at the same time, we can have all of the subclasses inherit some function or something that uh, will be shared between all of the template. And so the rest of the code is pretty self-explanatory, but as we notice that uh, I just created this helper function as well, just so we can kind of um, simplify reading the code and understanding code, but um, this is just basically it. Remembering also the really key differences between having something that's going to be shared already between all the subclasses, having something that we have to instantiate, and having something like a hook that we may or may not implement. But through this strict skeleton or through this strict order, we're already being able to account for these uh, behaviors and at the same time not having to depend on the subclasses or maybe um, having some complicated order of things that may kind of get complicated down the road, we're noting that no matter however we log it, it will always follow this order. And it, even if um, I have an error log, I can already account for something down the road as well. And then, so that kind of concludes the demonstration and the code. But what's really important to understand about this pattern is thinking about that idea of inversion of control. We are putting more control at a higher level because we're already predetermining that there is a specific set structure to how we want those subclass behaviors to work. And so we're not sort of having this freedom of, you know, implementing different uh, classes, different behaviors that we know are going to be related we're creating another constraint in this idea that, hey, I know that there's going to be related behaviors, and I know that we want those things to vary or differ, but at the same time, I want to restrict it so that we can create some further um, constraints and order in the future. And so irregardless of how maybe for the logger, we might implement so many different ways of how we notify, or even we might change the way that we save the log that we want those things to be shared between all the subclasses, we can already safely create an order in how this application is already predetermined. And so the most common ways that I've seen online of this being implemented is sort of, is in a logger or in a document viewer or something that we know that's going to fit this shared behavior and order. And so this might not apply to all situations or all domains or all applications, but we can kind of understand that if we have those two constraints, that this might be the best way that we can put more power at the higher level instead of relying too much on those subclasses because as we sort of add more concrete implementations of maybe a com of an interface or an abstract class, it can muddy the way that we understand an application as it further grows out and develops. And so 
if we can create these systems at play, like for example, that viewer that we know that's going to fit that specific order and constraint, but vary in the ways that it's implemented, then we can further and clearly understand how we might um, understand the way that the applications run and how we can add more order into scaling out an application. And so that was about it. I'm, a lot of updates have changed in my life, so I might create a video, even today, just giving more info, but I appreciate those that have watched this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was helpful, then you know, just leave a like or leave a comment, and I will continue to try and create more and more of these uh, pattern videos of TypeScript in the future, so thank you.